Professionalism 101. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to ILR2 Season 6 for the Mexican Grand Prix, round 18 of the season. And joining me alongside tonight is F1 Maestro and James. How are you doing, James? Hello, everyone. I'm well, and we're back. It's been a very long Christmas break, and we've just had some technical difficulties to delay us another couple of minutes. But we're, we're finally back uh, for the fourth last round of the season. And the championship could be clinched today, but probably not. Hmm. This will be close tonight. Um, he has to win. So Danny has to win the race uh, in the hope that York finishes, isn't it eighth or lower or something like that? Yeah, eighth or lower or ninth or lower or lower if he gets the fastest lap. So it's, it's one of those where it's unlikely. We've got 13 people uh, in the session, so um, Jork basically just has to finish. And as long as he finishes within the points, then we could go to America uh, with the championship fight continuing on. But it's still, I mean, even if it doesn't be one, if it's not one tonight, it's still a great result for, it's still going to be good for Danny going into America at least. But again, anything can happen. Uh, and Mexico is one of those circuits where... Um, lots of overtaking that happen. They got a long um, pit straight, which is mega long going into turn one. And there's two DRS activation zones uh, on this left as well. So plenty of chances for overtaking around here, um, isn't there, James? Yeah, um, as you said, the, the pit straight very long. And then if you don't quite get it done down there, you get a second opportunity down into uh, turn four. Uh, as I'm watching Jao Paolo, who's the first person uh, to start a lap, who's heading down into turn four now, 27.8 for the first sector and I think pretty much everyone will be qualifying on the soft compound tyres this week. I've heard suggestions that the two stop is the fastest strategy much like it was on the, the last game um, where in fact Overkills and myself uh, got a 1-2 uh, for Force India the last time we raced here back in season 4 I think it was we did race here last season so if that's the same today actually some different strategy for once as opposed to everyone doing the one stop which could further spice up the race so let's jump out a bit wide into the stadium section but obviously we don't know it could rain which could throw everything even further out of the window as Joe Paolo now rounds the penultimate corner the final corner isn't really a corner just get the power onto the line it'll be the first time on the board but it, on a, a 14.9 I don't think that's massively quick um, if I'm being honest based on what I recall Times being on the last game, but we'll have to wait and see. You are now also to come around the final corner. He comes across the line, but he's evaluated his lap, so we'll wait for the next lap time. And then he puts in a 14 point, so maybe 14s are what we're, we're looking at, but that's a lot slower than it was on the last Massive game. Massive, though, yeah. yeah, just Good bring luck it down him. 10 by 10. Uh, but we're still waiting for Danny and Mike to come up. There we go, Danny with a 14.2. That's more I get uh, blowing away yeah, the competition by half a second there. Where so Mike's come around the final corner, so he's he's on it. He's uh, a little bit of overstep on the exit. Let's see where it's going to be, a 14.9. So not really with his teammate, he's seven tenths off there. So um, a bit of time to find for Mike. But Danny, once again, setting... The, the times of the line are like really at this point 14.2 and it's five tenths clear of a smasher uh, is there anybody else out there on current laps Jork's at the moment just started got... a lap. let's uh, go on board with Jork and see how things are going so he's through the first corner and now in the, a it's a very tricky there. yeah exactly and it is harsh on track limits that second too I mean, if you cut it it's very easy to cut and um, to gain the most time but he's navigated through there nicely was it in the first at the 28.1 and then now through the next, the great. almost, yeah, it's yeah. not great, is it? That's he, not the he, best he's backed line. off, I think. He's not, he's not really going, I mean, it's not, he's not pushing it hard, I think, because we'll keep on board with him. Let's go through now the tricky, almost left, right section. He's keep, it almost goes on forever and ever and ever. Uh, and now this last part of it, and it's be careful with limits here as well. If you go wide, you extend. If you go, if you cut it, you cut it. Um, and it's a 56.0. So again, That's a not bit looking. Other people to be doing, but yeah, definitely. This lap doesn't really now matter. This... Exactly. Now we're into the stadium section, and now the last corner. Let's see where he's going to put him. Is it going to be? I mean, it's probably going to be a banker, really. For him. He's actually going to come across the line for a one minute fifteen point zero. Puts him P seven. So a banker lap, I would say, for Jolt there. Yeah, definitely. I think he realised at the start of sector two that he was quite off the base in the first sector. And then turn four and five really didn't go to plan. He 
took a very compromised line with an early turn into four and then five wasn't much better. Meanwhile, Antmaz has got slightly closer to Danny than the rest of the field have, but he's still some three tenths behind so Danny once again looking like he's in the class of his own at this early stage as uh, much is on the mediums as he comes to complete a lap of Aaron Dazzler's not, not on a lap at the moment yeah, we'll he's on the him. soft so let's see how he's getting on because he can pull off some very good qualifying laps Dazzler so let's see what he's doing in the middle sector a 55.5 mm. so that's, that's somewhere near where second. Mike was yeah that's half yeah, a second where Mike is. so let's um, see now into this tight stadium that. section that very be, he has Let's I'll see, go, anyway. through the go through the final corner, let's see, it's nah. a bit into the pit lane, so he's invalidated there, and he's called that a day. Um, Pigeon Munch, he's on the medium at the moment, so I'm guessing he's supposed to maybe doing this, might be doing some strategy, or he might just get, be getting a feel for the circuit at this point, which I just understand, we've been away for a few weeks, and um, people might not have been playing the game in that time, and we're having a bit of fun, so might just be getting a feel for the circuit on those tyres, and just putting some laps in in the early stages, whilst the track is rubbering up, and then he'll probably put on the, the softer compound um, towards the end of the session. Um, anyone you else, you're, you're in on an out lap. Let's give you Let's a look. Look. Um, some TV time. time. His yeah. first sector wasn't bad, 28-0. Uh, not massively off the pace um, as he's taking a very wide entry into there. Mm. Just about, oh no, he's, he's, yeah, he's invalidated there. That, he's, yeah. that is one of the places where it actually is harsh. Some of the others you can take the piss a bit, but extending the first left-hander there uh, it is quite harsh. Um, in terms of you can get invalidated if you're only just big off the track and that's what happened to Birch there but Joe Paolo meanwhile is on the lap uh, currently in sixth place as he heads down to turn one uh, once again he's slid past the apex slightly but he's recovered it for turn two and three but he's going to get a very poor exit Ooh, out a bit there. Yeah. And that's pretty yeah and he's back out of it lap gone straight away so Ewan is on the lap just behind he's just exit turn three it's slightly more controlled fashion than the Alfa Romeo and Giampaolo did and he's putting a 27.4 through the first set that's very competitive but there's a lot of traffic ahead of him shifting down to first to the right away hander, nicely. as we now have yeah. double right first again for short shift to third and next a bit of oversteer on the curb as he heads now down towards the far section in the middle sector he's kind of just about kept on the track I guess to lift big time through that left hander and again through this right um, but he has to see within the white lines. That was see good. See what the middle sector is. 54, 54 eight. This eight. is very quick. This could be quick and value if he just puts it together in the last sector. As we now head into this difficult hairpin corner. Oh, bit this deep. Bit a bit, a bit deep. That will cost him tenths. Uh, definitely, as we now come round to the final corner. Can you get the straight run to the line? What's this going to be? 13. One minute, 41. Four point one. Is, is enough, despite the error in the final sector to depose Danny, but Good luck. that makes me think a sub 1 minute 14 is definitely on the cards if everyone can put their sectors together at the end of the session. But good stuff from you in there, provisional poll for him. Yes, and Danny though, meanwhile, is on another lap. He's on a 55.1 in the middle sector, so that's a bit down on what Ewan did. So let's see. Danny though, if he can get this last sector um, on point, he can be... Right, he can probably beat Ewan. So through the last corner now, he's a good exit here. No. And let's see what's going to be... He's back I, think he, I think he cut the, the right hand ever so slightly after the hairpin. And that might have what been about Ansmaz? He's on a lap at the moment in the racing point. So he's now coming Three through the this fast one. middle set. He's got a bit but deep and he's had to the, no he's way they're cut that. Get away with that, surely. He's continuing no. the lap, but surely it's in balance. He's wide. And he's, he's got to have given that up. What's it going to be? 55 0, up 5 tenths. Surely that is not allowed. Now we're going through the tight section of the stadium. If he puts still yeah. pole with this, I'll cut. Uh, no, Surely definitely not. not. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. He must be. If 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 he has been allowed, no, he's coming. Um, exactly. Let me just check that Melanie smashes it in third, by the way. Nice, fourteen point four, and then Mike's gone to fourth with a fourteen point four, so he's improved slightly. Um, anybody else out there? Jork at the moment. Let's see how things are going But he's two tenths down and he's, and he's backed out of this uh, one sector. as well. Turned a bit ERS yeah. all the way down. So he's somehow managed to do the first step even worse than he did last time. And so he's going to... So somebody... Zelch is on the hard, so he isn't really going for a quick all-out lap. Again, it might just be getting a feel for things out there. Um, but yeah, no one... I think that's everything. 
Let's have a look at Dazzler. Though he hasn't set one at the moment. He's, he did one earlier, but then I think he cut, didn't he? So let's ride on board with the Red Bull Driver. He can pull out a little, uh, uh, some few surprises, can the Red Bull Driver. So let's see what we can do. First at the Navigated. Um, let's see what it is in the first sector. It's going to be a 27.7. So not decent bad, enough. not bad, but not, it's decent enough. Better now through these tight sections, yeah, you've got to be very patient here. And now this double right-hander, again, patient on the throw. And he's done pretty well through there. I hasn't got any oversteer. And now through this fast section now, left and then right. And again, very, we mentioned earlier, very strict through this section. It's very hard to cut with the amount of speed that you're taking in these cars. Um, but he's done that pretty that well. It's, it is clean. 55.2, so it's in the quick. ballpark. Uh, now into this tighter section at the stadium. You've got to be very careful, very patient here. You don't want to cut anywhere either. Um, oh, he's lost the rear. He's cut that as well. I don't know if that's allowed. It might allow him because it's cost him time. But here he comes running it to the line. It's a 14.4, but it doesn't. Where is it? Put Could it be five. Actually, that's better. not bad. He had at least two tenths in his pocket there. That, that error um, definitely cost him a good two tenths there, I'd, 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 I'd say. So he could be right there with Danny um, if he actually hooks up the lap. He has got time to box it in and put in a fresh set of tyres and then go again. Um, so we'll, I expect to see a bit more from the Red Bull driver in the final closing stages of qualifying. Jorks backed out of his next lap as well. So he cooled it yeah. down and went again on those tyres, but he's bringing it into the pits and they'll have one last shot. Uh, at the end of the session, Mexico is doing it on the hards. Uh, as Ewan is a bit out of sync, but he is now starting another lap, currently on provisional pole, heading down the pit straight towards turn one and preparing yourself for the broken zone. Hit the brakes just before the 100 meter board, down into third gear. He has to use second because he's overshot it a little bit as we can swing the car through turn two and three. Good exit from there. As no, he, he backed off. Something went he's wrong. He's cut there, I think. Maybe, yeah. He or cut he on the second part, I think. Let me check yeah. the director if it's saying invalidated. Uh, it might not. It's invalidated, so maybe he just felt that he couldn't make the time back that he lost uh, through turn one. Uh, meanwhile, Gian Paolo mm. is on a lap, um, uh, which he hasn't backed out of just yet, so he's coming towards the end of the first section now. He's slightly down on his previous best, but there's definitely time to make up from the 14.9, although. That's not the best line it's through turn five. Uh, turn six, he's hooked that up slightly better. Can he get on the power nicely? A bit, got a bit of a little bit of there. there. Yeah. But now he's on the pad, so he's going to probably really struggle through this section. Actually, maybe he's not on the pad. Um, but that's not. Great. Oh, he's also rare. He's in the wall. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Well, <laughs> that I don't know what happened there. He has a massive bit of oversteer there, and it just. Hit almost on the car, but just spat yeah. him out and off we went. So um, that I've was interesting. That in the um, before, but never in the dry. That's a very weird very one. Very strange. Uh, That's strange. I, I wouldn't expect that because people have been using that outside curb as well so i'm surprised that's kicked him off like that um meanwhile everyone's on outlaps at the moment we've got danny Numeric and mike on the lap again. following each other so let's go back to numeric bird to see where he's getting on he's six tenths up so this is looking for a good improvement uh, he's run quite wide well, he's there, wide there though he might get away, get away with that it. one i think but yeah. he's missed the apex again to the hairpin uh, and he might be throwing away all the time that he'd made up in the first few sets deep into the last corner as well and that's going to cost him on the run to the line uh, we'll see if he can improve still and he 15 can 15-0 he even beats Jork but not quite enough to beat Jao Paolo and we'll now move back to where the action is Ewan didn't improve obviously but he's up on his second lap by just under 10 he's extended that corner that's not what we'd like to see but he's nailed the hair pin this time so this could be a sub-14 if he can hook up the last corner properly, which it looks like he has now floor it to the line. What's the time going to be? It's going to be a 13.7. Danny has That's incredible. That He's, just lost He's on a lap. lap now, though. Yeah, let's go on board with the Mercedes driver through turn one now. He breaks down into second gear, keeping it in third now for the rest part. And I think he's cut that third part, but I think he's okay. He should be fine. He's continuing on. His also first sector, how is it looking so far? No, 27.6. He's up on his previous best, but whether that's up there with Ewan, I wouldn't know at this point. And now he's through this tight section. Got to be very patient with the throttle now. Down in second gear, locks the front right, and he's gone a little bit deep, but nonetheless, he's actually got the power on 
now through the fast left right and now it's be careful on track limits here and um, let's see what he can do now he's throwing it into the corners as well as he can uh, he doesn't extend he doesn't cut how is it in the middle set is it anywhere near it's a 55 no. one that's not great I don't think that's nowhere near where Ewan's done so now heading into this tighter stadium section can he go any faster than he already has and I don't think he can last corner he can improve maybe but it's going to be not anywhere near you and I feel across the line. It's a 14-0 and it's three tenths Might off Dan off from um, Ewan. Yeah, him. so that's not ideal for Danny. Does he choose to go again or he, and save the time this lap and go? Yeah, if he has enough fuel, he could do it. Um, but he's gone straight on at turn one. We'll, we'll check back on that one. Uh, who else is on the lap? Someone else uh, to watch is... Dazzle isn't on one yet, but he's coming to do one. And Smaz, is he on one at the moment? It looks like he, he is. is. Yeah. So let's keep on board with the racing point and see how he's getting on. So we're heading, heading into this fast middle sector now. Again, as we mentioned before, strict through here. And you've got to be very careful on track limits. And I do expect to see Ooh. a few penalties in these in these races, in this race today. Um, not bad. I don't know if it's okay. It's a 55 Two three. It's not. It's this a couple tenths up, so let's see. There's a lot of positions in two tenths this afternoon as he heads into the stadium section. Now he's cut that. He oh, might get away with that. it. We saw Danny get Oh, oh he's gone a bit deep. Yeah, and so he comes it. across the line. And Smaz is going to be a 14 3, puts in P4. So behind Mike. Uh, his second row of the grid for him. Aaron Dazzler, he's on another lap. He's improved in the first sector, so watch out for him. Bear in mind, he lost probably a couple of tenths in his previous lap in the last. Um, in his last lap so we'll see if he can improve any further um, let's go on board with Red Bull driver and let's see um, James is Danny no Danny's pitted I was going to ask Danny it, yeah. Yeah. It a day. I, I um, Dazzler's a taking so, oh, he's taking wide. so much speed and uh, it's got to be invalidated maybe though. but it's a tenth up here he comes now through this tight um, stadium section now uh, which is brilliant to watch um, the celebrations in real life, but he's actually done a better job through this. This is going to be a good improvement, I think. Last corner, get on the throttle. Here he comes, drags it to the line. It's going to be a one. Uh -oh. He's backed out. It was going to be a 13, I think, because it was or well, early 14 at least. Uh, that's a shame. Why was he backed out? Of it, it was invalidated. Yeah, I think Whoa, invalidated. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, it was just invalidated just now, I think. So. Interesting. Uh, that's unfortunate for Tesla. Melanie is not on a lap. Jork, however, is. He's a tenth and a half up through the first sector. Uh, who's actually just been knocked out of the top ten by Pigeon Munch. She's been in a 14-7. So Jork needs to get a lap in here. Otherwise, he's starting right at the back. What's in the second sector? This pit? Has he found this time? Only two tenths. This is mm. not looking promising for Jork. He's only going to get in eighth or ninth, really. Anything above that is out of the question. As he now comes through the head bit in the stadium section. He's navigated that reasonably well. And now just one proper corner to go. Double short shift into fourth. For all the power and use of any ERS to get there. Straight to the line. And mm. it is only night for Jork. Not what he was looking for. Whatsoever. But this is not a very good track for the pass. If I'm being uh, honest. Especially in the middle of the sector. So maybe that would have been the Jork. His pad compatriot Pigeon Munch. Uh, a tenth and a bit ahead of him though. So there's definitely more in the pack for Jork. But I think we're done. Um, I'd like to go back to Bambi not going for another I think that's 100% the right decision. Given how long the run is down towards turn one here, I don't think he'll mind starting in second whatsoever, as we do now have the grid. There, there it is. Ewan on pole position. So fantastic lap by him. And Danny in second place, showing the front row. Mike in third. Ansmaz in fourth. And Smasher in fifth. Melanie in sixth. Aaron Dazzler in seventh. Mr. Pigeon Munch in um, eighth. Uh, and then Jork in ninth. And Jab Heller in tenth. And then Nureik Birch on his debut in eleventh. And Zelchi in twelfth. And um, Mexisu in thirteenth. That runs up your grid. So, um... Very Interesting. Uh, from my session. And Zuzu there. Definitely, uh, yeah. Um, but I'd say going into this race, I think um, Ewan's on some good pace, and that's a great lap by him. Um, yeah, but if you remember but, back to Japan, which I wouldn't forgive you for not remembering back to, Ewan actually won it on track, but penalties gave Danny the win. So, especially given how corner cut heavy this track is, we could see a similar story. Um, if you and can't keep it within the white lines, he may be the quickest, but you also have to be uh, 
legitimate uh, with your driving, but you managed to get in a couple of legitimate fast laps in quality, so maybe he's sorted out his track limits over uh, Christmas, but a 36 laps around here, lots of the penalties will be picked up. Someone called that there'd be a disqualification. There was when we raced here uh, in season four, but less drivers this time, so maybe not, but uh, very harsh on the corner cut, so it may be definitely a lot about not not corner cutting and reaping the rewards when everyone else has 15 seconds added to their race time or whatever at the end uh, so the likes of Danny, Melanie and Jork definitely will be looking to benefit from that as we now have the formation lap Yeah and um, we are now away for this formation lap and um, going to be an interesting one I think heading into turn one um, plenty if you hook the start up nicely and you're behind the pole man um, and the well, behind the front row in general um, you have a very good chance of getting a nice toe into turn one and we've seen that a lot of times even in real life so We'll see how this all plays out. Um, but if Ewan nails a start and he covers off the inside nicely, I, can, I can't see him really losing track position uh, unless he has a really poor start. But um, Danny, for Danny, obviously the focus will be for him to win the race because um, he knows that if he wins the race and York being in ninth and York's pace is not... It's, it's not been good. It qualifying has not been good for him. However, he ca he's a very consistent race man um, and he can really pull it off in the races. Um, but if Jork is going to finish ninth today and Danny wins, then that is championship over. Um, so we'll see how this all plays out. Danny would probably be hungry for the win because um, he knows that this is, that's the best chance, the best opportunity of winning this championship. But bear in mind, there's a lot more opportunities for him to win this championship. And if he might decide that for risks, in terms of risks worthiness, it's probably not worth going for the risk um, and battling you in too hard. But if he actually has the outright race, outright pace to win this race, then... I wouldn't blame Danny for trying to um, beat you in on track, but we'll see how it all goes, James. I think uh, yeah. it's all going to be start procedure. Um, let's get it clean for time one, and then um, the race will progress as it should, as um, now they are now lining up on the grid for the 18th round of the season. And let's get this one underway. Will we have a champion today in this tier? We'll we get those answers, uh, those questions answered very shortly in the next hour or so. So here we go. We are waiting now for everyone to line up and we'll be able to get this race underway. New Year, still awful camera angles um, on the on the start. Cheers, Go Masters. Yeah, Danny's going to go yeah. for it, whatever. We, we, we know Danny. He's a, he's a pure racer. Uh, he has the points in the bag as we now do have the lights and the good camera angle. We have four lights and now we have five. And it's lights out and away we go. I think it's a good start from Danny. Um, but Ewan has just about managed to cover him off. I don't think he has. It's a race. It's a drag race. To lead, maybe. As we head down towards turn one, Danny alongside Reed trying to break him. No. Ewan oh, he doesn't go for it. And, and look at Mike round gone very deep into turn one. And uh, it's a bit of a cluster behind. But um, I'm surprised that Danny didn't go for it. He was well alongside there on Ewan, but couldn't do it. Mike still stays in third place for now. Ansmaz in fourth. But the Smasher is battling away with Ansmaz. Smasher to the inside of Ansmaz. It's going to be really, really close. And he's going to try and go around the outside and cut back on the racing point. But he's too far back and I'll stay behind. Again, he'll try and cut back here. But it's a short run to the high speed next few corners. But for now, everyone's staying pretty calm. Pigeon Munch into sick for Head of Melanie. Um, yeah, so they're battling away nicely as well. So Everyone let's keep the... Team, but it did. I'm surprised. Oh! Out from oh, the wall! Crash. Smasher! Um, but he's okay. I think he hasn't lost any front wing. He's wow. he's lost the rear end of the car. But um, as things stand, moving on to the top five as it stands, Ewan is leading this race by seven tenths of a second as Danny is, is in hot pursuit of the Williams driver as lap one is finished. And uh, right now, look at this. Danny is already um, trying to drag him, to get dragged along by Ewan in the slipstream as much as he can to stay within the tow and stay within one second. So when the DRS does come into activation, he has a very good opportunity for that. But yeah, but very clean start up. from the most. Yeah, the gap's opened up massively given how short the lap is. You had already almost a second, and then Danny almost a second to Mike, and then the next two gaps are over a second. You know, I can't believe Smash is still in the race, at least from the camera angle I got. I thought he was maybe even going to lose a tyre, but, but from what I saw, there was no damage on his front wing. So, although his tyre may be a bit hot and he's seven seconds behind Mexi's do as it stands, he's 
seems good to continue and with only 13 drivers in the race it's definitely worth it you never know what will happen come the end of it as Ewan has got comfortably a one is, second yeah. gap over Daddy here 1.3 uh, he's pulled there Ewan big time and electric at the moment but what, what strategies are people going for a smash against a penalty there might have been an incident with numeric birch yeah he's had a spin and damaged his wing actually uh, contact with Mexico too I think but yeah, maybe Danny's trying to conserve the tyres more. Maybe he's thinking about a one stop. One stop, stop, yeah, that's stop, what I was stop, say. Stop, stop, stop the hard is a big stretch, I think. Um, but yeah, that's you are absolutely thinking, going um, for it. Definitely a two stop for yeah. you, and, and we'll have to wait and see with Danny. Uh, in terms of the tyres, Selchi was the only person on the mediums. Everyone else started on the softs. Um, Including you, Merrick Birch, I imagine we'll have to visit the pits. Ooh, and Tesla. Pigeon Munch. Making yep. his way back as Danny gets a five-second penalty. Wow. For exceeding track limits. Oh, no. That's I a, wonder... Is that extending turn that's, three? That, that's, one of, that's one of those, um, James, where it'll be the one-off. Like, you have one-off, and it'd be like, you, you cut it slightly, and it'll give you a five-second. It does happen. And it, I think mm. it is... It happens on this game where you just have, you basically cut once and yeah. you'll just get a pen like that. And it's, uh, that'll probably get removed as long as he well, hasn't if, done... Just check the race director, Jamie, and see. Yeah, I did. So, yeah, I have a warning on lap two, but even then that was only a second warning. Um, but, yeah, if he serves it, they can't remove it, I think. Um, oh, so, it will probably That's get harsh. stopped, though, which means God. he will serve it. Uh, but... He needs to work on opening the gap, but Ewan has it over two seconds now. He is flying. That's and crazy. It's actually all over the back of his teammates. So, interesting developments here. Ewan making a break for it, but the battle for second is still well and truly on. And the thing is, though, James, is that they're not going to play the team game either because they've got Antsmaz right behind, and he is trying to close in on this um, for second place. So, if anything, it, it might be... Danny might have to let Mike go. If he doesn't have the pace or he's trying to do the one-stop strategy, um, he might decide to let Mike go and just get dragged along by Mike. Because at the moment, we've got Ansmad behind in fourth, closing in, and that's the problem. So uh, Danny can't afford to back the pack up too much and lose too much time. It might be that if Mike is faster, he has to let him go um, for the race benefit in general. Um, but yeah, the gap is massive. Ewan is absolutely flying. At these early stages, and the pacing qualifying was superb. He's not—he was obviously getting fantastic lap times, and it's now transferred over to the race as well. And he's doing a solid job at the moment. Um, Jork, in terms of championship wise, he's in eighth for the moment. Um, so he's but he's Danny's made not up winning. Position. He's, so no, it's fine no. for the moment. But obviously, still losing more points, which will make it even difficult, more difficult for him in the long run. Meanwhile, Smash did end up in the pit, so clearly he did acquire some damage on that one. And uh, Danny losing the back end down the last quarter, so he's evidently pushing, but Ewan just seems to have the pace. Mike's dropped back a couple of tenths on this lap. Meanwhile, Antipas has actually closed in a tenth, um, but Mike's just mm. close enough to be able to sit in the DRS and get dragged along by Danny for the time being, um, as the gap is now approaching three seconds between the two of them. Short, That's meanwhile, going to have a look up the inside of Pitcher March into turn one. For seventh place, he gets the car stopped in the apex. Pigeon Munch unable to hold it around the outside and Jork moves up another position in the seventh. And Pigeon Munch may be under pressure from Zelchi actually heading down into turn four. Zelchi has the DRS. Pigeon Munch has nothing to defend with. And even though he goes to the inside, I reckon Zelchi will be able he's, to outbreak him. And Joe Paolo, he's just completely backed out. He's lift. He's and backed out of that, yeah. He's lifted out. So I Pigeon wonder why he's that. Maybe thinking he can't compete with those two given he's on the pad. I don't know. Potentially, but that's just a very weird one. To give up two positions there. Um, maybe he's got damage or something because I want to hold him up as uh, so he's all over the curb through there. Um, but yeah, I imagine One the enemies actually passed Antsmaz in a very oh, weird there we go. place. So I wonder if Antsmaz I wonder if Antsmaz is. Because that's one thing, he lost the rear end seconds. So Antsmaz must have made a mistake for the Estes. And Melanie's been able to capitalise on that, and he's up into four. I think it's pretty much now picks up a penalty as well. And the standard three seconds. Let's seven. keep with Ansmaz for now because he has. Will he have the DRS? I'm thinking he will he have does, the DRS. Yeah. Here he goes. He'll be towing him down, down the straight now. Can he make pets. a move? Watch out Here he comes, well. Ansmaz. Down the That's inside. The Here he goes. 
And Asbur's gone down the inside of Melanie. And Melanie trying to go around the outside. And he has got the better line. But race, the racing point will need to try and cut back if he can. The Williams uses the rear end. And here he comes. DRS activated. That's also, Delchi. Oh, Dazzler's really going for it as well. Here comes Dazzler wide. as well. It's three wide. Heading into the next corner. It's so close. And it's Aaron Dazzler round the outside of both wow. of them. And there we go. He's into P4. What a move by the Red Bull driver. And it's a shame that I couldn't get the onboard. But we've got the uh, TV camera done for you but that was a great overtake by the red ball driver risky but that was superb yeah i didn't get a really rank on it um, either unfortunately but one of the moves the season is Asper has absolutely annihilated that left hand meddling did a little weave after its heart and frustration but yeah um that is oh it's it's, it's back um, did you have a lag moment there as well, or just me? Yeah, and, and just, just you. <laughs> That's you. Oh, okay. I, I got you. Yeah. Um, Dazzler now, um, still in P4, uh, and he's trying to try and stretch the gap out to Ansbaz. But I'm just wondering, you know, Ansbaz is just falling off the pace. It's like he's just, he's, I mean, he's been, he's now down to P5. He was right there with um, Mike, or was catching Mike and Danny. And it's all gone wrong. It's just gone completely wrong. He is within DRS again of um, Aaron Dazzler. Dazzler will try and break the DRS as much as he can, but it is difficult to do that round here. But Ewan's proved with uh, a lot more pace that you can do that. And he's now 3.8 seconds in front. So he's dominating proceedings here in Mexico. Um, but in terms of battles, this main battle for fourth place between Dazzler, Anspaz and Melanie as our main one. We've got Zelchi also in that. And Zelchi's on the medium. He's actually been able to overtake Jork. Those, and he's on the medium Those mediums tire. will are going to become the better tyre very quickly. We've already seen Jump yes. Hallow into the pits. Uh, Pigeon Munch pitted and retired. Smasher also had enough. Uh, as Anspaz getting a bit slowly on the rear through that left-hander. So definitely starting to look like there's a trans... Uh, in terms of pace towards the mediums as opposed to the soft tyres and such is all over the back of Melanie already who won't have the RS yeah. from the racing point this time round and may well become easy beach to the Red Bull who is yeah, looking to make the ultimate here. strategy work. Melanie's got a surprisingly good exit at the last corner. Mike Pitt's been involved for his first stop of the race so but without the RS I think Melanie will be defenceless from the Red Bull and indeed he is. Zelchi's made the move halfway down the straight and he was up into fifth place and he can now get after the racing point who I wouldn't be surprised if he catches before the end of the lap given the tyre differential at this point in the race. Melanie down to sixth um, with Mike in the pits as I already mentioned. Just one thing, the gap just slightly come down between Ewan and Danny um, in the last lap. It was 3.8 now 3.6 so um, maybe Danny has been looking over those tyres and it is starting to come down a little bit more now 3.5 so um, things are starting to come back into Danny's window a little bit maybe and maybe he has been conserving those tyres to try and make this one stop strategy work. That's, that's our theory at this point whether that is actually happening. Um, so let's see if Danny pits his lap because um, Mike's pitted first um, and as Danny was the lead car of the two you'd expect of him, you'd expect of him to pit first but he hasn't. So let's see if he's going to box it in. Penalty. Ewan boxes. Will Danny follow him in? Yes. Danny's yeah. in, so there we go. So he's he mirroring, he's mirroring the Williams, because the Williams is at the end of the pit lane. Um, but yeah, Danny has slightly better ERS, so maybe you were having to oh, he's got that the, a bit at the end of the He's got the drive for as well. He's got the oh, yeah, going go in there as well. So, so he'll be behind Mike and there we go. Sure. And you'll have to look out yeah. for being behind Dazzler when Dazzler pit was going to be on the next lap. Short calls to win, also for step mediums. All three of those guys putting the mediums on. Mike coming down the pit straight now, Ewan's miles ahead, but as predicted, Mike is comfortably ahead of Danny. Um, and Short is actually behind Char Paolo, who got a lap, couple of laps of undercut on him there. But yeah, after we forgot about the stop go, which has cost mm. Danny big time, um, because he would have been six or half a second or so ahead of Mike without it. Uh, but instead, he's nearly five seconds behind. So. We'll have to look out and see where this trade of Dazzler and Ansbaz will be a bit later, but where Dazzler and Ansbaz, I imagine they'll pick this lap come out in relation to uh, the Mercedes, um, or more specifically just Danny, uh, because they've extended the stint a bit, which will give them slightly better tyre life on the next one, but Dazzler was looking, and both Ansbaz and Dazzler looking like they have a severe lack of grip in the final sets here, so I would be very surprised if they stay out for another lap. As we now come around the final proper corner 
That's the they both box. And Spurs follow yeah, them in, they which leaves Zelchi to take the lead as we start lap 10. And we have to see where these two come out. Melanie follows them in. Next is you have a... He does what he wants. He's staying out for another lap and we'll move up into the seconds um, until you and pass him in the relatively near future. So, Dazzler. And Spurs also... has popped the hard tyre on just for this information there. So he's gone for the, the really hard one-stop strategy. So that's interesting. Uh, he's on the... And that's a very interesting strategy. And Let's Danny see if that actually pulls off. That's why that was very important. And George has jumped Melanie, who's gone on to another set of softs. So Melanie going for a, a different brush. So we've got a variety of different things going on. I think Melanie's felt that he's dropping a bit behind and he needs to, to go for it uh, to try and bruise a gap. Because over that seven seconds behind Chalk, that can't be right. He must have had a wing change, surely, to be that far behind. That's, that's very strange. And he's on the soft. Melanie yeah. was on the soft before, wasn't he? Yeah, so, so he's that's... doing soft, soft, medium, I guess. Yeah, I and guess. Yeah. Soft, medium, medium. We were on short. Has the one that had the cuts made a massive difference. Jork was not particularly near Ansmas, and now he's right behind him. Uh, so Ansmas is well on the hard, so Jork will be hoping to maybe make progress past the racing point in this thing. Meanwhile, Jump Power has come out of nowhere and is now. Uh, in the podium fight behind Dazzler and uh, Danny, so the stops have uh, reshuffled the order quite significantly, actually, and that's with the cliff almost, um, with Dazzler and Antsmaz and Melody really dropping off on the uh, ninth lap that they spent on those tyres. Um, as Lexi Zumi, well, absolute madman, staying out for yet another lap, although he didn't do qualifying on those tyres, but still stretching the stint quite significantly at this stage. You never know, it might work out. I mean, if there's a safety car that gets deployed, you never know. It might be in the window, but um, worth a shot, I suppose. Um, in regards to um, Danny, you know, that, that penalty he had to serve has really put him in a little bit of pressure now because he's got Dazzler and Jao Paulo very much nearby. And one mistake, one hiccup, it will mean that Dazzler gets within DRS. And actually, he is within DRS now. He's within nine tenths of the Mercedes driver. So Danny has got a lot of work to do. Um, because the pressure is starting to mount here and um, he has, doesn't look so good in, in race trim either. He, he's not looking as... I mean, he's closing the gap to Mike, but, you know, he's not been there with Ewan's pace. Though he's been absolutely mighty so far. Um, but, yeah, not looking great for Danny. I mean, Danny even gets to put him out of this. Fine. Second penalty. Yeah, but oh Danny won't mind that. He's still getting points on Jork and he would have known he's even tweeted that finishing the championship today was unrealistic for him so any points on Jork would be a good result for him regardless especially as Jork is struggling at the moment as Mercedes who finally pits um as Danny's run a bit wide out of the final corner that's a weird one um but yeah uh I don't think he won't mind he won't mind not finishing it today and he is actually significantly catching Mike who's now over seven seconds behind you and Melanie unsurprisingly just the fastest lap with the, the soft tyres on um as he has closed the gap quite a lot to uh, Jork and the like. So the pace differential Ooh, is actually pretty Jork big. Jork and Asmaz are going mighty together. Jork there we go. Let's go with this. Here. Great so here he line. comes. DRS. Asmaz won't it's have good. to defend this win. Yeah, there we go. Done, dusted. And we're around the outside, and I'm sure he'll have it done. Yeah, done and dusted even before the corner arrives. So um, Jork now with the better tyre. Um, up into seventh place, but Ansmaz obviously those hards are going to become better um, as the race goes on, and he will be right in the mix towards the end and on that different strategy. So we'll see how that plans out for Ansmaz at the moment. But I'm sure Ansmaz is just running his own race. In this case, he's probably not wanting to get in too much of a battle with Jork at this point um, because he doesn't want to lose himself too much time. No. However, he's not. Jork hasn't really bolted away so you know, yeah, he's he not doesn't have any held DRS. that's the problem he used pretty much oh. all of his DRS whilst passing Ansmaz and Ansmaz has a, a healthy chunk of his remaining so it wouldn't surprise me to see the racing point have a go back at uh, the McLaren on the pit right here but he's not got the best message from the final corner draw goes to the defensive no, and closing. back to the racing line Ewan gets a penalty but that won't worry him with it nearly 8 seconds out but Ansmaz doesn't want to pass him no no ERS uses no DRS uses but the slip should just that powerful that he was still closing up to McLaren, but yeah, you are 100% right, and it's not wanting to get involved in any battles, just wanting to run his own race and not lose too much time, uh, which was evident by literally no attempts being made to pass Jork on the straight. Meanwhile, 
that's the thought in them is DRS and is again dragged yeah. with McLaren, uh, not McLaren, the Mercedes, sorry, um, back up to Mike. The gap now only just over two seconds to Danny's teammate and decreasing all the time. So Mike had some pace in the first inning, but he doesn't appear to have it at the moment as he's uh, going to be quickly reeled in by this pair. Jampalo's dropped off the back a bit and may drop into the clutch of Jork with the older tyres. Yeah, we'll keep with this, actually. Dazzler looking very good and um, both are getting big well. time. And Not this is the best fourth. chance. Yeah, that's really good management. Um, this is the best chance as well because at the moment, Danny isn't within DRS of Mike, so if he wants to get past him, Two the time is now. Him. He's five tenths back. Let's keep on board with the Red Bull. Uh, he is closing and closing and closing. It is closing quickly, so let's see. Has he got enough? And Danny defends to the inside. Dazza goes to the outside. And here he comes round the outside of the Mercedes Road. Can he go for it round the outside? And they're, for, they're really um, forcing each other off the circuit and um, banging um, each other's tyres really hard. But there we go. Um, Mike, uh, Danny rather, stays in front of the Red Bull right now. But here comes Dazza again oh. to the inside. He pushes him onto the grass. And Danny really aggressive with the defending there. That is very much on the limit. And Dazzler, I'm sure, will probably be feeling uh, a little bit hot under the collar there because, yeah, yeah, a bit hot under the collar there. But he's thinking that's probably too far. Um, and that could have ended up even worse than it did. So yeah. Dazzler, not, I'm not impressed with that defending, in, in my opinion. Well, we saw it get a bit silly between, I think it was Dazzler and Ansmaz in Japan, uh, if I remember correctly. And it's always gone the same way there. I think Danny expected Dazzler to back out on the exit of turn one. Uh, which he didn't, which is kind of fair enough, um, as he's actually now pits. But yeah, that Danny taking votes on the other Daniel, Daniel Ricciardo, uh, who made a very similar move uh, to, to the one he made down into turn four on Sebastian Vettel to defend his position back in 2016. Um, um, well, they both managed to defend the position, but Ricciardo got a penalty in real life. Uh, we'll see if that uh, takes this to the stewards or not, but... He's too far back this time as Zelchi has come out in a solid stick place and he's on another set of mediums. So he'll have to pit again, but he has much that fresher is, mediums. That's good. And he's definitely that, in the podium fight here, 100%. Only three or four really... seconds behind Danny. A very good first hit from Zelchi there and with yeah. the soft tyres still to run, looking good for him. Yeah, it's played out really well for Zelchi there. Um, a very good first in and doing a superb job. Um, meanwhile, I mean, in terms of this train of Danny, Dazzler, Jao Paolo now really in the fight too, and Zelchi will be closing in with his fresh, with his fresh media medium tyres. So, um, oh, and that does have the Jao Paolo is straight with that. in the corner behind him um, on his medium, which are probably, even though they've only done nine laps, given the really weird tyre wear around the track, those mediums are probably pretty second hand, but. Daz has now got his ERS charged up to 100 to launch and another attack on Danny. Uh, but once again, Let's the exit see. from the last corner isn't very good, but he has all the ERS. gain it, though, the back on the straight, yeah. So here he comes, he's gaining again. I think he's going to be too far back. I am. Um, it's got to be, he'll probably try and launch another attack on the, I mean, I say that, he's closing really quickly, um, but no chance. He'll try and hook up a good exit through um, this uh, first sec, this first part of uh, the lap. A C. It's not. Uh, it's not no, great it's either. So that. again, he's gonna have to wait a little bit longer. He'll close up, but um, he'll have to follow the Mercedes through the next sector and hope Ooh, for a good opportunity. No, I don't think he. He was fine. I think just about. Oh, I just switched off there and it looked pretty close, but as predicted, yeah, Zelchi has arrived. Um, Jorge Dumas has no pace and is still holding up. And Smaz to Melanie's. Uh, managed to dispatch, and I imagine he'll dispatch the McLaren as well, um, and maybe even catch up to this group. So, um, and he'll get the undercut. So it's looking pretty tasty in the battle for second downwards. Euron's checked out at the front, but uh, everything else is all up for grabs as we come to finish uh, lap number 16 here. Mm. Can does the launch a successful attack this time? Can he get a good run through the last few corners? Um, no. We'll see um, this. Not this really. Problem. Seven tenths again. Danny's only 30% ERS this time, so he might not have as much to defend with. Uh, but does does not have the over speed with the slipstream? I don't think so. No. The answer. No. Unless he's going to launch it, which he's essentially decides not to. I wouldn't to. recommend. No, not <laughs> against Danny. 
Uh, but if he could set up a good run through turn three, which he hasn't really no. done, Danny is safe for another lap. But Zelchi, no, Joe Paolo has DRS, so there's not much Zelchi can do at the look, moment. Look at that, though. It's so close between these four now. Uh, and yeah. the thing is, Danny, I mean, he was 2.1 behind Mike, and then it was, became 2.8, now it's 2.3, so he's closed back in on Mike. But um, this is a very interesting battle for, um, well, it is third place for now, but could become second. And uh, they continue the closing on Mike, who really Danny is, but he's bringing the guys behind him to that fight too. So um, Danny's got his work really cut out. Dazzler's now four tenths, so That's he's in the half closer. second. This is a good opportunity. If you can hook up the stadium section perfectly and get a good run through the last corner, this is a great opportunity. You just need to keep the momentum building as much as he this can through this last corner. This is closer, I think. So here he comes. He's a good, decent run, which he has got a decent yeah, run. Yeah, and he's a bit wider. So here he comes, Dazzler now in the stitch team. And he's got the DRS and using the um, DRS as much as he can. Down this straight, he's closing, closing and closing. Here he comes, looks to the inside. Danny doesn't even defend. And the Red Bull gets up the inside and into turn one and is in front bit, of but... Danny. And Danny will try and cut back though. Danny is not going to give up with, and he's going to have, um, but actually Dazzler has a DRS. So Danny to sit to the inside. Does he go for it down the inside? He does not, he plays it safe. And that is a wise option there. Dazzler gets into third. And I'm just wondering, maybe did Danny think he went too far earlier on? And maybe he just let Dazzler have the inside and not the fence so hard. That's what I'm wondering. Maybe, look at his DRS, less than 20%. I just think he realised that he couldn't defend it sustainably. Um, meanwhile, Zelchi also managed to get past Jao Paolo. And Danny will now have to worry about the other Red Bull. And Dazzler's made that move at the perfect time. One of the last opportunities he was going to get before Danny was going to be able to uh, use the DRS off his team. He's Mike. really close so, on Mike, though, as well. So Dazzler has five to Mike. done that perfectly, I think, because Danny won't have enough DRS for a couple of laps and launch an attack. And by that point, I reckon Dazzler will be in the DRS of uh, Danny's teammate, Mark Marshmallow, as Joe Paolo has now dropped off the back of this train due to his uh, medium being rather old. As Danny's ERS is in the single digits, uh, so he's not going to be able to mount an attack on uh, Dazzler. He's really one. vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so late, Zelchi, so late. Yeah, I'm on board with him. He went so late on the brakes there. Um, but Danny's going to try back on Dazzler. DRS activated. Here he comes for the second attempt to try and get past Dazzler again. Turns to the inside. Does he go for it down the inside? He has gone for it, but it'll be the Red Bull around the outside. Right. He turns to the inside for the next part. And uh, I'm afraid, Danny, mate, that is all she wrote because the inside turns for Red, the Red Bull driver. But hang on, Danny's around the outside. It'll turn to the inside for the fast section, but the Red Bull will be a car length ahead, surely, as Dazzler is, does stay in front in third place for now. But meanwhile, Zelchi, Zelchi is piling on the pressure and he's really in this battle here because he wants to get past. He's gone very wide, though, out of the fast um, section there. So it's... It's close. It's really, really close because also Jao Paolo is in this fight too. Um, this is a good old scrap here for um, third place, I have to say. Yeah, Danny actually got a penalty when he went off the track trying to go around the outside of turn five to pass Dazzler. Uh, so he'll probably argue that Dazzler forced him off. Uh, but I don't think he really had any business going off the track. There is Jao Paolo does give up on those medium tyres. He might put on another set of mediums to get to the end. He'd have to do 17 laps on them, not impossible though. Again. No ERS Danny, again. He's too far back. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, does, does he need to? I don't know what he needs to do. Does he decide to just stay here and just save his ERS? But the problem he's got is Zelchi behind. Uh, yeah. Here he comes Danny really again. And he's going to be closer again. Round the outside this time. Let's see. Go around the this outside. Turns right to the here. inside for the next bit. This is not bad, but Zelchi will have the outside line. Zelchi's oh, forced. Zel wide. And. I actually meant Dazzler, but Zelchi down to the inside, and look at that, Zelchi, up to out, out of nowhere, gets into third place, so fair play, um, there we go, fresh tyres into third, and catches Danny and Dazzler in their own battle, um, there we that go, Zelchi into third, it was, um, it was. Three, three into that corner was a bit crazy, but Zelchi made it work, and he bolting those tyres have much more grip than Daz, Danny and Dazzlers, which have double the uh, time use. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, so, as uh, Zelchi won't be on any was... sort of threat from Danny, who's squirming on the exit of the last corner. 
might better watch out because his tyres are even older um, and uh, he'll have some yeah. in his case who mainly pits me while a solid 10 laps in on the soft tyres and he'll put on the mediums to the end now um, as Danny as predicted unable to do anything about Zauchi um, but the DRS is enough to protect him from Tesla at least for the time being um, so yeah Just it's one all thing on down that. a bit yeah. Just one thing on that battle, I think Danny, it almost seemed to me that Danny didn't see Zelchi, Zelchi coming. He, he kind of moved to the inside and and he kind of then readjusted his, um, his steering angle and, and stopped it because he thought he could go to the inside of Dazzler and but then he didn't realize Zelchi was there and he looked like he had to like back out of going to the inside because Zelchi was there. So I think Zelchi caught him off guard a little bit there. Um, and I, didn't, I don't think Danny expected Zelchi to go to the inside. So um as I said, yeah. very good move from Zelchi there. And Zelchi, as you said, he's closing big time on Mike as um, Danny's just trying to stick with Zelchi at this point. Um, I'm wondering if Danny might try and pit now, but I don't yeah. know because then you'd be on a set of mediums. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think does uh, he pit? I don't know. I think it's like Mike. Mike's in the pit lane. So Mike's pitted. Um, Danny hasn't gone for the undercut. Because I was thinking if Danny went for the for the pit first, undercut and got in front of Dazra again, that would be him, you know, well, back in front of Zelchi, rather. Um, it would be him probably on the podium, but uh, again, at risk from Zelchi towards the end of the race. Yeah, so, I think everyone's trying to stretch it for the softs. Mike's evidently given up on that, but he was the first to come in on the first in, so that does make sense. I mean, Ewan could do whatever he wants. He could put on the hard and he'd still probably win the race, so I don't think we have to worry about him. But yeah, I think definitely Zelchi, he has to run the softs because he's only run medium so far. But I think Danny and Dazza will try and stretch this another couple of laps as you and Brick have the second penalty, but I think he's still got mm. plenty in the bank. He's safe, yeah. Yeah, um, up front, because uh, everyone has penalties, I think, apart from Mike and Melanie, I believe. Um, so fair play to those two for the moment. Um, but yeah, I think these two are just going to crawl around to stretch it for the softs, um, which will, I'm not sure if that's a good idea because the softs won't be that great. We saw in the first bit, they weren't that good. They worked ish for Melody, but now he's still six seconds behind Gia Paolo, so that's not that good. Um, so I think Mike will get quite a hefty undercut of these two whilst they're on their mediums, as Danny actually does pit, so he's mm. going for the mediums again, evidently. Um, so yeah, I think that's the correct strategy is Mike, As Mike gets a penalty. does get a penalty now. So Melody is the last remaining driver without a penalty. Um, Jork's right behind Anspaz here. Here comes Jork on the same sort of age of, of mediums and gets on the inside of the Anspaz. And Anspaz says, now down back down to fifth place. So those hards, so as they've got older, they've just not worked. They've really not worked. Well, cause old, I mean... Oh, the soft mediums are doing a better job. And now the short three past him again. So, definitely a bit of an interesting one there. Um, maybe as Danny gets another stop Danny go. Gets five seconds. He, that, that one will get removed because obviously he's not going to pay again. So, um, we'll have to take that into account at the end of the, the race. Um, yeah, definitely. But, yeah. Jao Paolo is there with Mike, but he's on a slightly older medium. So there's a little battle going on there, but I just feel that Mike will, ever, will eventually have the upper hand in the end. Um, yeah. But that means that Danny's got a car well. between... That means Danny's got now another car in between himself and Mike, which is a disaster because he's going to try and get past Jao Paolo now. Um, he yeah. should be able to do it because he has fresher tyres, but it's just another car he's going to have to pass on circuit. Yeah, Jao Paolo is giving it pretty much everything to try and stick with Mike's DRS. I think ERS is pretty worn, so um, I think uh, Mike will have superior pace over Jao Paolo, so he will drop him eventually, uh, which will allow Danny to get past, but it will delay his charge onto the back of his teammate, definitely. Um, but um, as that's going to now be past his short, but I think uh, Danny with the better pace and the one lap pressure tyres will definitely be able to pass his teammate Mike and ignoring the, the BS. Uh, stop go then they'll be equal in terms of one penalty so um, that will be for track position as it stands uh, but the two ripples still hanging out for the softs at the end of the race um, mm -hmm. which leaves them running one two as you has now pit for the mediums um, and almost still came out in the lead which says enough about how dominant he's been this afternoon um, as Danny is to Jao Paolo here yeah. he's 
He's right there. He's really putting the pressure on now. He wants to get past him. Japla loses the rear a little bit through um, these uh, fast corners, and now Japla gets a penalty. Yeah, um, Danny's really piling it on now. He's in the slipstream again, and he's closing up again. He's obviously not going to make a move here, but he wants to hook it up in this stadium section as much as he can. Now through, it's very tight. He's got a little bit deep, but he wants to be. Yeah, he's very too deep, and that's and lost in a bit a of time. And that's not going to. No, but he's not. Right here, off the over to take for another lap, unfortunately, um, for Danny. Um, yeah, just a bit too opportunistic on the brakes, and that's why we're sliding past the apex uh, of whatever corner number that is, the hairpin, and throwing away any opportunity of passing the Alfa Romeo down the pit straight. Um, and this benefits Dazzler, I think, and Zalci, obviously, by expect Zelchi to beat these, this lot anyway due to the fact that he'll have the, um, the softs on at the end and has nearly four seconds over Dazzler. But this holding up means that the undercut that these three would have got on Dazzler is slightly nullified. Um, and as a result, when he does put on the softs, he won't have as much time to make up, um, which will uh, benefit him when it comes to the end of the race. Um, we'll have to wait and see how the gaps play out as next season he picks up another time nice. penalty. But I think he's pretty safe in 10th as you wrote, Birch picked up the penalty to cancel that one out in 11th, so those two probably going to finish where they are in the moment as Ewan sets the cross attack. Ewan does that. And yeah. that's in the pit, so he's going for a big stretch, 11 laps on the softs at the end, maybe in 10th with a lot more fuel in the car, so probably possible for the Red Bull man, and we'll have to see where he comes out. How much will the two lap undercut, or three lap undercut rather, or four laps if you're Mike, have affected a bit, I think. Uh, the pair of them and where's Danny? Why is Danny so far back? I don't know. What's happened? What's he was fine and he's he's eighth. That's just happened because I was looking at Danny and he's just I don't know what's happened there. Has he had a has he had a screen freeze or a game? Yeah, has the game frozen for in, a bit? That must that him. must have happened. But that must no have happened. For Danny now. He's He's well off, the, well off the back of Gian Paolo, not in Dazzler's DRS, and he's got literally no DRS, so... I don't he was in front of Dazzler, and there. then something... That's definitely got to be a screen freeze or something like that, because yeah. that, he was in front of Dazzler, because Mike, Gian Paolo, Dazzler, uh, and um, Danny all went past him on the pit straight, so he was way, Dazzler was way behind, and now he's in front, and Danny's lost a bundle of time on the straight, so that's definitely a screen freeze, that's in my opinion. Now Danny gets no penalty. Uh, oh, he's now he even so annoyed. with Melody as you would set another fastest lap. So, an unbelievable turn of events as Melody had a big slide into that corner. Danny giving it everything on the throttle, booting uh, the throttle, pretty much losing the back end. But yeah, well, that, I think a screen freeze. As, yeah, he's lagging again. He's crashed into the wall on my screen. Uh, oh, he has on my screen as well. He's into the. Is that his actual car or a low car? I think it might I don't be his know. Like, I. No. He's lagging. He's lagging. He's just lagged forward again for me. That That's not right. That's yeah, something really He's only wrong. just ahead of short, so I don't know what we're seeing here and where Danny's car actually is, but we'll assume it's in eighth, um, but it could be in sixth. Uh, this could just be a, a very weird lag car glitch, which I haven't seen for a very long time um, on these games. Um, but yeah, that's a very weird one. Um, but yeah, Chalk also pits also for the softs, and he'll be wanting to have a look at Danny as well, and maybe gain points in the championship after all of this. Meanwhile, actually started to play, I expect we'll see him in this lap, and I think he'll end up quite close to Dazzler, um, due to the couple of laps that Dazzler will have got on the undercut on the fresh softs. Look at Chalk. Look at this. He is going to gain on um, Danny here. Danny... Oh, it's just to... gone. It's gone to. It's gone to nothing now. You know, it's really gone wrong. You know, he was running second for the start of the race, then dropped down to third, and it's just all just turned to a mess. And it's uh, it's an unlucky race for Danny here because he looks very much certain. And now Dazzler, 16.2 first lap of the race. He's really so flying stays out off. another lap, and he's giving away track position here. But maybe he thinks he'll get it back at the end of the race when Dazzler's tyres die. Um, and then he's got a good enough exit off the final corner for now, I think. Although Jordan oh, is getting he, it. Maybe it's more, more, more a lot of laggy Danny. A lot of lag. 
even and for he's, he's, I don't know if he's... Jorts going for yeah, the committed Jorts move, despite run. the lag. Uh, I would recommend it. He's going to try and cut back. Here he comes. Cuts back on the Mercedes. Gets the DRS. And I don't know. Danny's really Danny losing time. Is that actually his... No. And there we go. It's the it's, it's Jork into eighth. Danny down to ninth. And Jork is gaining in the championship again. How the scales have turned back into Jork's favour and Danny must be absolutely furious yeah. with what's going on here. Pick. I can't blame him. Yeah. We'll have to find out what's happened, but I'm not going on board with Danny anymore because he's got the engine glitch on my screen. Um, now, Jao Paolo is right there with Mike again, so um, he's is, he really did close up. We also have to consider Ansmaz. Is he doing the one stop? With only seven laps to go, or eight laps to go, including this one, is he going full commit? If he doesn't pick within the next as no doubt she has managed to soft out just in front of his teammate Gasper. Um, and I think he will say that despite his teammates' massive over speed, so pitting at just the perfect time before uh, if one more lap and Gasper would have had him as Jampano picks up at least his fourth penalty. So even if he does get past my contract, there's no way he's keeping it. Um, but I, but I fully suspect Selchi is going to have this podium. Um, but he yeah, may have to bridge a gap because I think he has two penalties and Mike only has one. But I think he will have no problem bridging that gap on the soft compound tyre. Um, yeah, well, then we have to work out what Ansmas is doing. If he doesn't pick this lap, I think he's I think he's gone full commit. I think he's committed to what is an audacious strategy, which might pull off, might get pulled off due to all of the battling that we've seen today. Um, as Zelch exactly. just has so much more grip for the middle sector. Um, he might try and move into the hairpin, maybe. Ooh. Oh, he's broken so late. He's hit Jao Paolo. And that, has he got damage to that to that front wing of his? I'm wondering. I now I that. Lag, but I don't think uh, he actually hit him. I didn't see anything fly off. But he should still no, I didn't see anything either. If he's lagged him off, in my opinion. Because. There comes um, Elchi on Mike. Look at this. Look how fast he's closed up. And here he comes in the DRS. Mike's going to be defenseless. And Mike. There goes his podium. Delch is going to bridge the gap in the next six laps. Well. Yeah. Oh I feel sorry for Jao Paolo. Yeah, he definitely. wouldn't have kept it because of the penalties, but he had been driving, driving a good race in terms of pace, and he's just been... Yeah. Admittedly, Delch might not have actually hit him, but basically barged out of the way, um, which is unfortunate. But that's the will probably pass time. Mike as well. As Jim picks up a third penalty, but um, he's, he's, he's clear enough. Um, but yeah, that Ansmas did pit, so he is going for this one stop, which he has to go for to stay in the championship fight, um, because he's 99 points off the lead at the moment, um, and at the moment he's going to gain 16, which would just be enough. No, it wouldn't. He would, uh, it's um, not Mike, in the fight regardless. Um, but Mike will watch drive. Dazzler again. So um, Dazzler's in the fight in another Mercedes and the, he'd want to get past Mike here. Let's see if he can get a good exit through the last corner. And I do sense he will get a good run here. Um, and he's really close to Mike. So here he comes in the DRS. is coming up very shortly and he's in the slipstream already. And Mike, well, he's going to try and defend, but it will be for mercy in because it, it will be in vain. And Dazzler gets past Mike into fourth place. Um, but yeah, Mike's is still, you know, if he can keep it himself clean, he might even still be on the podium yet. You yeah. never know. Um, but Dazzler's tyres are going to drop off in the last couple of laps of this stint. He's exactly. been on them five laps, actually three laps less. So actually what we said, and Danny actually battling with Jork once again uh, through the first two corners. Jork will go for the cutback again, but Danny's covered it off nicely. But Jork really likes actually, it. No, he hasn't. And Jork's around the outside. He drives him on the outside. Um, but Danny does have a deal. Uh, here comes Danny. Us. Round the and outside, Jorts does he get around the outside? Side. Oh, it's round the outside to the inside. It's it's rivals 1v1 and the McLaren stays in front for now, but the Mercedes is to the inside. Jork lets them have it. Very clean racing from both of them. And Danny's, well, is there something he could take from this afternoon, this evening? He can go, well, at least I've battled my main rival this season and given it a good show. And um, there, there's a show going on here. He... For pride, he's going to be able to battle and just try and gain a, another point on his uh, on his rival. But yeah, yeah, staying behind, he'll have the DRS on the next one. But he can have a bit of fun uh, with with uh, Jork and uh, hopefully try and get past him if he can. Yeah, that was very, very clean for those two. That's what Danny and Dazzler should have done earlier. Um, good respect for racing. 
No, I swear Danny will have another go this lap if he has the ERS to do so. Here he comes though, yeah, he's in the dip, he's right in there and um, he's revving out, I'm not going to run one, but goes to the left hand side and Jork um, lets him have it and uh, look at that, Danny swoops to the inside aggressively to defend, um, but meanwhile, um, that will mean Danny will have the second bite of the cherry on the DRS, which means that pretty much the McLaren will be a little bit... Yeah, uh, it's a good exit though from Jork, but it's not enough and Danny will stay in 8th place surely. Jork doesn't send it down the inside and Danny's in 8th place once again. Yeah. But Giselci really caught cool Ansmaze, look at this, 7 well, tens back. And, really uh, he's surprising quickly. given Ansmaze is the exactly. 22 lap old hearts. Um, exactly. Giselci, it's going to take, I don't think Ansmaze will have anything to defend and Dazzler will probably be on his way through in a couple of laps as well. Um, but if Antimus has left penalties, maybe he can pick up a podium here, which I think he deserves it. If he does manage to make this two, or oh, one stop work, rather, um, as Zelchi now has the victory, he has the DRS now. There's not much Antimus can do, uh, doesn't have much DRS to defend with, and sensibly he doesn't fight the record, who moves up into second place here. A long way behind Ewan, but nonetheless, uh, good stuff from him to move up into second, and We'll see if Dazzler can also close this gap to make it a double Red Bull podium, at least on track. I've lost track of all the penalties, um, but Mike could end up on the podium for all I know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, as Jork is behind Danny, now it's his turn to save the ERS and maybe go for it at the end. Um, we're going to discount Danny's stop go and say that these two both have six seconds of penalties, um, which makes it slightly more exciting in terms of this actually being a battle for position, albeit the two championship rivals battling for eight as my podium chances go out the window. Mm. Uh, just seconds after I talked about him being on it. Oh no, never mind, does and that does penalty as well. Yeah. So uh, who knows how this is going to shape out come the end of lap 36 as Ewan has now started the third but last lap um, all, all out on his own at the front of the hill. But yeah, maybe George Tyler's starting to drop off now as he's visiting Narnia there. And Danny is starting to create a gap again, so Danny may still gain points, uh, which I think, given how crazily and we don't really know what happened, but given how awful this race has been for him in terms of luck, I think he'll be happy with um, gaining a couple of points because Jork is struggling for rear grip at the moment and the gap is up to eight tenths, so I think Danny may be off on his merry way uh, in eighth at the moment as Tesla is closing, but not massively as Jab Paro picks up possibly his fifth, possibly his sixth penalty. I don't want to look at that race director if I'm being uh, brutally honest with you. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the main part of Ansmaz, but I think Ansmaz only has the one penalty, whereas Delta has at least three, so we should see the racing point driver on the podium if his tyre doesn't blow up in the remaining two and a half laps, which, as I said earlier, he thoroughly deserves. Um, it's all calmed down a really a bit. good race. Yeah. Because I thought that was a good race from the Ansmaz. Yeah. Yeah. He's staying with him. He's, he's, he's still with him. He really is with Danny at the moment. But um, going back to Asbaz, yeah, he's doing a fantastic race. You know, he drove a good race. He was behind. He was actually in the battle with Jork, wasn't he? And he didn't battle it too hard. Um, he did overtake Jork occasionally, um, but he didn't battle too hard. He raced his own race, I think, done in eighth, and just did the strategy, followed the strategy. And he's pulled it off really well. If he can just hold, maintain that third place. That would be a fantastic driver, and I'd say probably up there with driver of the day. Ewan's obviously done a great job, but Antoine's strategy come is... From the back of the grid as well. It's yeah. a difficult so one. <laughs> top, three, uh, top three would be a very well-deserved top three. Um, oh, yeah. Great job. As Jork was quite in a second. Enough. Yeah. He's in a second, but he'll be closing up. But Danny, I think, has this one covered, I think. Um, but... Um, yeah, interesting to see what happened with Danny. Uh, that, for me, that's definitely got to be some sort of screen freeze that's caused him to be wrapped down the order. That doesn't happen on a straight like that. that that's, that's strange. So, um, Dazzler, though, closed back up to Ansmaz, but again, this is probably penalty pending. So, Dazzler will be able to get third on track. The bottom of the screen, he might have just disconnected. That's unfortunate. Oh, he might lose his point. Um, depending on if his AI can drive him around quickly for the last lap or so. But speaking of which, Ewan has now started that last lap, but I think we'll go with Dazzler, who's right up behind Ansmaz, who, the last chef, he'll know that Dazzler has a lot of penalties, and if Dazzler mounts an attack, Ansmaz would be sensible yeah. to not fight it. 
and let the Red Bull driver uh, go as Ewan gets what I believe is his fourth penalty, but more than 12 seconds clear of Selchie, who has penalties himself, is does, does fly past into third, but I don't think he'll be keeping that position as he goes into turn one now. And Jork has now actually dropped out of DRS um, yeah. of Danny. Uh, he didn't get it that time around. So Danny is going to hold on for eighth unless he gets another penalty on the last lap. And I think that is pretty much everything. Ewan. That is. Here comes Ewan, oh. though. We haven't seen much of this guy uh, all race. He's been a very quiet race by him, but he's been a textbook drive. Um, didn't have a great start to the race, but it's kept hold of the lead. And um, it's a very dominant race by the Williams driver. He's coming through the stadium section for the final time. Um, Eric, the fireworks are going off into the last corner now. And it is a win for the Williams driver. Round 18 of the season in New Mexico. It's his for the taking. Well done to m and um, Ewan, who takes it out here. Zelchi now coming through the last corner. He's now got 6.4 seconds of a gap to um, Dazzler, which is interesting. Comes across the line. Zelchi takes home second place. Really solid driver. It actually gains a little bit on penalties, but um, is second. Dazzler across the line in third. But will it be Ansbaz? It will be Ansbaz in third. So great oh, drive by Ansbaz. Just Ansbaz's. fourth as well. Jao yeah. going to drop and now Jao Palo with his penalties. Yeah. Melanie will have him for Melanie, sure. Um, out the last no corner. Penalty. And he will. Danny, Danny out happen? the last corner. No. No. Jork, Jork well. though, gets seventh. But we have to remember but that that's the five second penalty to be removed. So Danny yeah. will be seventh. Jork eighth and Jao Palo in ninth. And you know, Birch's disconnected car is looking like it's going to hold on to tenth, depend tenth. Depending on penalties for these two. So. Um, uh, it's looking good for the AI who's managed to, despite having the gap massively cut down by Mexico, looking like it will hold on, at least on track, as he does come around the final corner for 10th now. Uh, he also had a stop go, and I think Mexico might take it. Yes, he does, uh, on penalties. So, there we go. Rex well, the Mexico to win his first win of the season, which makes it... 12 different winners, maybe? A lot. That's crazy. Um, we've the season just like in season four. And there he is on the top step of the podium, joined by Zelchi, also collecting his po first podium of the season. Um, and Antsmas collecting another one for uh, himself. And we'll be able to speak to those three shortly, hopefully. Although I don't think you enjoy the parties, but we can maybe have a chat to the other two as we'll get the results up on the screen for you guys now and there we are everyone got a penalty in the end including melanie uh which i missed but shout out to him and ants who only got one but it was indeed you were taking the win from zelchi coming from the back of the grid to second and first putting in a fantastic one stop to get third and then mike marshmallow who closes the gap to both danny and jork in the championship and he remains in the fight as well heading into usa uh that's the however does not remain in the fight he didn't gain enough points on danny uh, in fifth, Melanie sixth, Danny will get promoted up to seventh because I'm sure that penalty will get removed. Jork in eighth, and Jao Paolo in ninth with Mexizu just taking the final point by just over a second on penalties with Mr. Pedro Munch and Smasher retiring early on in the race. But yeah, it sort of died out towards the end, but nevertheless, a very entertaining race here in Mexico. And <laughs> we will speak to the podium drivers any moment now. Um, we'll just wait and see if you and joins. Hello. Well done, chaps. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. GG, lads. Have you invited you? Have you I have indeed, I have yeah. I've done some in two invites. Um, we'll get started then, I guess, and if you enjoy this, we'll chat to him later. So, start off with Zolchi, his first podium of the season, um, I think. And from the back of the grid as well, just the alternate strategy, talk us through how that race went. Definitely entertaining from our point of view. Yeah, I'll just try to keep it as clean as possible really. I think getting the move on Danny and Aaron definitely definitely I think sealed that podium for me. 
such, such a good move. But I've been really unlucky so far in ILR2, especially with my wheel anyway. I've been in good positions and it just died on me, so it just feels good to actually finish a race for once. Yeah, so yeah, definitely so that. Do you think you can yeah, maybe carry maybe this momentum into the final three races, get some more podiums, or maybe a win? Because you definitely had the pace today if it hadn't been before deciding to qualify 23 seconds off the pace or whatever. So do you think you can maybe uh, repeat these results or even better them in the final three races? Uh, I'll, I'll try my best. I thought qualifying, my aim was to qualify on the mediums, do medium, medium, soft. So, to be honest, even if I probably put a good lap in on the mediums, I'd have probably still been in the same position. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, congratulations. High around here, so. Yeah, made for an yeah, interesting race. Yeah. 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 Congrats on your second. I think it would be a tie drive for the day between all of the top three for me, both winning in very interesting. Uh, drives, very impressive drives for different reasons. Speaking of different drives, Antsbaz with the one stop. Um, we were questioning if it was possible when you went on the hards and you pulled it off. How was the tyre wear and how did you manage it, especially with other cars passing you in the second stint? Uh, I think I put it a bit too early uh, for the hards, just two laps, because it kind of showed towards the end of the race and I also got held for around two seconds in the pit lane so I lost the DRS to Aaron I think so I could have stick with him and stick with the medium running so I could have got maybe P2 but I'm still happy where I finished P3 but towards the end of the stint I knew the soft gunners would get me instantly especially Salchi he was flying like oh my god it was unbelievable and then yeah I got to like 70% tire wear towards the very end at very last lap and yeah it wasn't very pleasant and I just held it in and just got there and kept the podium. It was a risky strat to be fair. Uh, risky but it definitely paid off. Um, unfortunately I have to inform you that you didn't gain enough points on Danny so you're out of the, the very same no. group you had as the championship. <laughs> Um, yeah. But still, all to fight for in terms of pride in the last three races. Similar question as to Zelchi. Will you be looking to finish off strong with some more podiums? Oh, me? Wait, talking to me? Yeah. Yes, you. Similar question. Oh, sorry, I just, got, I just yeah. went blank. I got I yeah, went sorry. blank in mind. <laughs> it's all good, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get a few more wins, in, not a few more wins, uh, a few more podiums, you know, in, in the next few races. Maybe a win, if they're about, but I kind of forgot ILR was on this week, I just didn't realise yesterday, so, yeah, a bit of a late timing, but, yeah, I can't wait for the next few races. Uh, congratulations to the both of you on your respective podiums, and to Ewan, who's uh, not here on his first win of the season. But I think we're we're done for Mexico, and we'll see you next week for USA, where Danny will have take two at wrapping up the championship. <laughs> the yeah, well done, boys, and uh, we'll see you next week for round 19.